Um, okay, let's talk about this season. I, I feel like your time um, at Nottingham Forest was a bit interesting. So the season starts, maybe for the first few games, they give you some time. Then at the point, it's like, ah, Taiwo is now their sub striker, you know. Um, when you kind of are not being selected as a starter, is that something that pains you? Is that something that motivates you? You know, how do you feel about not being the first choice striker? I think, uh, to be honest, everyone wants to play. Everyone wants to be in the first mm -hmm. eleven. But it's the same answer to, to what I said earlier. Even it's the same answer to, to life generally. Mm -hmm. if life can throw anything at you. The question is, what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. That's just the, the question. For me, this is my own opinion. This one can, it can be white today, tomorrow can be black. It can be green, it can be yellow. The question is, what step do you take? So for me, I want to play every time. Uh, the time I found myself playing, I scored. The next game I'm not playing when I'm not scoring. So, and you can see the club is just coming into the, into the league. Everyone wants to be successful. Mm. So everyone will keep on doing what they thought is right for the club. And like I said, it's the same thing when it comes to selection. The coach are best are the best that can explain what the, situa the situation is. They are the best that know what is happening in every club because they see all of their players. But every striker want to play, every midfielder, every defender want to play. But for me, I'm this guy. The you hardly see me having having a complaint about why are you not playing, why are you not this, and that's just me. I just keep on going my way. I just keep on doing my thing because you know it's in you. You know what you are capable capable of. So you just have to like when I'm not playing, for instance, I just say to myself, you just keep on working. You work, work, work. To, to you tell yourself uh, you've done your best. People will actually see that you've done your best. So that's just the rule to me when it comes to football. And what I don't like to tell myself is I don't know it as last. I don't know I've done this. I don't know I've done that. But the best thing you can do for yourself is when you walk to the point that you know you've actually touched everything that needs to be touched, there is no way the road will not play. Mm, amazing. That that's just my own way in, in football. So when I'm not playing, of course you feel bad. Of course you want to be on the field of play every time. But these are things that you can't control. The only thing you can control is what you do on the field of play. And the only thing that's the only thing you can control. And that's the only thing you, I keep on saying to myself most times. No, oh, amazing, amazing mentality. You know. Um. Okay. Let me ask you this question. It sound it sound easy though, but it's actually difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult because obviously at the end of the day, you are a human being, you know, and human beings have emotions, you know, have feelings. Uh, but I'm happy that you're able to, you know, keep yourself grounded and just know, okay, I'll control what I can control and just leave the rest, you know, and hopefully everything will work out. Um, I'll fast forward a little bit, you know, you scored a goal 22nd of October 2022 against Liverpool, your former your former club and not only did you score against liverpool that was the only goal of the game you beat liverpool you know how how did you feel just everything around that goal and that game <laughs> well uh, <laughs> i think uh for me i've already said uh, one of the best things that happened to me as a footballer is uh, signing for for liverpool not only because they are Liverpool, because but because of the the kind of people that work there. Mm. Uh, for me, they are actually nice people, and uh, you know, the day I signed uh, for for Nottingham Forest, or even the day I signed for Union you know, Berlin, for me, I know uh, I'm no longer a Liverpool player, and that is me. So playing against Liverpool, I see them as as my opponent then, and I see uh, that day, that very day. And the only thing in my head is for us to win and for me to score. And that's how I see the game. And I, eventually I was happy that I scored against uh, against them. Uh, but the good thing is, uh, 
almost everyone in the club message me almost everyone how happy they have for me how happy they are so so glad of my development and that's the thing about them and was it before the game or after the game that he messaged you after the game even some uh the director messaged me like he's actually open to to see how i will play and all so that's mm. that's liverpool for you they they are quite nice people and i was so so happy about about that day because eventually my team won and it's something that i'm really happy about but that day i just see it as a as a as me playing against my my opponent that's just the truth about the game no interesting interesting you know and of course um a win against liverpool which is a tough team is always a very very good thing um okay let's let's fast forward a little bit as well you know um the season is now you know in full flow i remember at the point you got injured when you were starting to pick form because i remember i watched the game against Chelsea, you were terrorizing Koulibaly, um, Koulibaly in that defense, everything. Then, you know, all of a sudden, you pick up an injury. How, you know, how did you get yourself through that? Knowing that when things look like they were starting to go well for you, all of a sudden, you are injured. How did you pick yourself up? How did you manage it? <laughs> uh, that's where, for me, that's where my faith comes in. Because my belief is, all things work together for good today that I love God. Mm. That's that's me. Because uh you know, it's actually what something that I actually work for. But at the same time, it takes the grace of God because I just, there are people that are working, there are people that are doing a lot of things. But it's if if it's not showing, that doesn't mean they are not working or they are not praying. But yeah. if your own doors open, just give glory and thanks to God. Because the truth is, uh, let me just put it this way. I think immediately after the, the World Cup break, I went to, to Portugal to, to one of my best friends. We both went to, to Italy. But we posted on, on our IG page, I said we are having another day. But this my this me and my guy, we're actually running our ourselves down every day. Mm, you're training. Uh, that's, that's the truth. I came back after the World Cup, everyone was saying, wow, what's happening to Taiwan? Because the drills they give us, the drills they gave us, I actually do, I do double of those drills every day. Mm -hmm. Because I said to myself, I don't want to go back and be on the bench, like you said, mm -hmm. I want to play. So, but I'm not saying, ah, yeah, it's because of what I did, blah, 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 blah. But that's my own philosophy. So coming back, that's how I, I get my chance to, to start because it's obvious, like, he has been working and, you know, so I played and those games are games that I say, I say to myself, I would rather die here because those are my, <laughs> those are my lifeline games, you know? So then after the Santantin game, then boom, the injury came. So of course you feel bad. Of course you you feel disappointed because these are these are time I'm actually like really really getting into the first four months was just like a flu for me. Like what's happening? But after the World Cup, it was me starting to like really play in the Premier League. You know what I mean? Then if yeah. you know football, you will see like this is me now trying to like free myself, minging out myself. You understand? Then the the injury came. So, but what can you do? It's part of the game. Then the that's how I see. It. Then of course you feel bad, you feel sad. But the best thing you can do is just to listen to the to the medical part and just keep on following the rehab process, which is what I did at the end. Mm. No, amazing, amazing. And you returned, you know, against Wolves, I think, in April. I mean, at this point, the season is, is getting close to the end. I think maybe there were like 12 matches or something left by the time you returned. And I mean, we all know this at the time, your team was also struggling, battling relegation. So let me ask you this, because me, I've never been in a locker room, you know, a professional locker room before. When a team is, is facing the possibility of relegation, is it, does the locker room just become like camp? Nobody is even playing music anymore. Everybody is just there like, ah, 
Um, oh, we guys, we know. Or is everybody still, you know, jovial, still calm, just, you know, going about their day? I think uh, we still talk. We we still talk. We still do our our normal life. But but the truth is, whether you are inside your house or you going to the training ground, it's changing your head every day. Like for a player that has been to what is called relegation twice, I know what it takes. Then for me personally, it it depends on each individual as well. But in this my club, I think it all goes all round on everyone because. We, we are a bunch of uh, good lads that are really, really hunger for, for success. And uh, every day it turns in our high like, come on, we have to go out, out of the bottom line. We have to go out of the bottom tree. We have to go out of the bottom tree. But we still do our normal life. We still eat, we still train, we still talk, we still do everything. But once we go on the field of play, we know this is our lifeline to get off the bottom tree. And yeah. that we don't joke with. But every other thing we still do it as normal. No, amazing. And I mean, leading up to the final games of the season, you know, one thing that they say is they say big games are meant for big players. And you know, towards the end of the season, I don't think that there was any bigger player than you. That last month of the season, you scored in four matches in a row. And out of those four matches, you scored two against Chelsea, you scored one against Arsenal. I mean, not to forget that you had scored one against Liverpool earlier in the season. How did you feel to be able to score against the big teams? And furthermore, Arsenal were chasing the title. So you know that Arsenal were going to come with everything that they had, but you were still able to score and beat them. You know, how did you feel knowing that you're actually scoring against these big clubs? Yeah, for me, I think... Uh, uh... I think the truth is, uh, I think it's not just all about me, to be honest. It's, mm. it's more of a team sport. It's more, it's, I think if you look at the team, then it's more of us getting to understand each other. If you look at the last game as well, it's more of us now playing more of, okay, I know, I know Taiwo better. I know what his strength is. I know what he's doing better. So mm. that's just, that's just us doing, doing that time. But of course, for you as a player, you want to score. For you as a striker, every time you want to score, you feel very happy about it. And yeah. like I said, after the injury, I've had games that has really brought me into the rhythm. And that's what most players need sometimes. They need games to get into the rhythm of the league. And after the injury, that was what I, that was what happens to me. And that's how, that's how I see it. But of course, whether you're playing against a uh, city or you're playing against anyone in the league, you want to score. You are there to score. So that's just the thing about, about football for me. It doesn't matter. No team is big, no team is small. They're all a football club. Yeah. And who you're playing against doesn't really matter. The most important thing is for you to fight for your own club and of, of hopefully get, get the three point that you needed. And as a striker, you know you need to score. So that's how I see most games. And I mean, in your whole Premier League season, your debut first Premier League season, you scored 10 goals, that double digit mark. For a lot of fans, I don't know about players, but for a lot of fans, if they look at a player that can score 10 goals in the Premier League and they say, okay, this guy did a good job, you know, as a striker. That's kind of when people like to believe that, okay, this guy, he has something, he did a good job. Um, of all the 10 goals that he scored in the Prem, which one would you say was your favorite of the 10? Yeah, for me, I think, uh, I think I will, I will say the goal against Arsenal. Reason yeah, being, okay. we know, we know this is a game we needed to win to save us from, from being relegated. Mm. And immediately we won that game and I scored, uh, I see it as the most important goals for me because that was the goal that keep us in the league. Yeah. And you know that for scoring that goal now, you've you've stamped your name in the hearts of Nottingham Forest fans. Now they all love you. They will not forget you. Ah, Awoni, the person that kept us up, you know, when we returned to the Premier League. You know, amazing. Um, as a player, you know, sometimes me, I, I, I like to just imagine I'm inside a stadium. Imagine you're in a stadium and 10,000, 20,000 people are just chanting your name. 
Like, does your head swell? How are you, how are you feeling when, when that is happening? Yeah, for me, I think, um, to be honest, most time for me, I think when I was in Union Berlin, if I could remember, even now in Nottingham Forest, when they started singing and shouting your name, for me, uh, you just have to, you just want to do more. That's just mm. the truth. You just don't, you just have this feeling of, these people giving so much energy, you just don't want to let them down. That's the feeling I have in my own situation. And uh, other players might have a different opinion, but you just want the situation where, like, whereby you want to show them the appreciation of, you appreciate what they are doing for you. Because some will travel miles before they get to the game and you just want to give it back to them, like, thank you for coming. and. That's just what I love to do most time in my own case. Amazing, amazing. And um, finally, on the Premier League, of all the stadiums that you played in, except the City Ground, which is your home stadium, which stadium would you say that you enjoyed the most? You know, of all the stadiums. Anfield. Anfield, uh, because you know your your <laughs> your first team, you know that you that you had signed for. No, no, but actually, like if for me. For me, like if you if you actually like in in the Premier League, you won't pick any other stadium mm. after the City Ground. For me, if you if you if you if you visit the City Ground, and even the City Ground is like you you know why they call it the City Ground. I'll tell you, like even most people in the Premier League, when you look when they hear the sound in the City Ground, they never wanted Nottingham Forest to get it because mm. the the fans. I, I wish we experienced it one day. The fans, what they, oh, what they, day, what they do the league, you know, like for me, it's amazing. It's really, really, really amazing. There, are, there are games that we went to, like it felt as if we are at the city ground because of the way they, they chant and the, the way they, they be, they stay behind their team and everything. So it's a, it's, a, it's like a forest that, it's like a forest that you have to like when you're there, you know, like. You, this place is not a place to joke, and the same thing goes to Anfield as well. Mm. So for me, I mean, that's what the two the, are most. The, the atmosphere of, of Anfield is well publicized. You know, we all yeah. know about you know how how intense the Liverpool fans can can be sometimes. Okay, um, I said finally, but I want to ask you one more question: Is there any game that you played or any player that you faced that you felt like ha or more? And I died today. Oh, this guy never won't give me space. You know, who was who would you say was the toughest person that you faced? That you it was just not working for you that day. Um I'm trying to think. Oh I'm trying to think. Ah, ah I'm trying to think, 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 think. For me, I will I will say like um uh, the the first game uh the first game against uh, Arsenal mm. the first game at home against Arsenal like when we play against Arsenal I think I would I would say like I think Gabriel and Saliba I think that was my worst game uh when I, in my first season in the Premier League that was mm. my the I mean the first home game that we played not the one that we won so that was when I was like what is happening. <laughs> In the in in the I think it's against us now in the first leg. Wait, so was this at at the Emirates? Yeah, at the Emirates. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm a, that did they, they beat you now, so I can yeah. I can understand. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and also because uh, that day also like I don't I, I I had this thought on and everybody gave to me I was already sleeping so even mm. the touch like it's as if they are just pushing me out of the way as if some people are just saying this boy is no longer eating no but I <laughs> that. But I think it's it's my worst game that I felt like what is happening, what's happening today. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Mm. Okay, um, and finally, um, let's move on to the recent events. You know, um, we just played another game against Real Leon. I'm talking about Nigeria, the Super Eagles now. You know, thankfully this time you were part of the squad. You came off the bench in in that match. We won the game. Ha. <sighs> When I, when I, you know one thing about Super Eagles, you people like to give us, uh, you, you like to raise our BP <laughs> with the fans. 
you know, ah, we, we're, we're leading 2 0. People are happy. Next thing is 2 2 again. And then thankfully, you know, Kelechi scored that last minute goal. Um, but we qualified for the for the AFCON. Um, how did you feel to to play in that game and you know to secure the qualification for, for the AFCON? Yeah, for me, I think, uh, like I said earlier, I feel I feel very proud and very happy about it because, and I think that I see as a game figure as well. Uh, you know, like the it's already written like twenty twenty three Afghan qualifier. I'm part of the player that qualified Nigeria, so that's the pride for every player that is part of the squad, and of course, everyone wants to play. In Afcon, I've been there before. I've seen the the experience. I want to be there again. And qualifying is a stage, is a step to making everyone, uh, making me be part of the squad. And every player I've got a dream to be part of the squad. So it's something that you're happy about as a player. Mm. Amazing. Um, during the match, though, you know, let me ask you this: during the match, when the score is two two, we are going to stoppage time. Are you already? Can you already hear the sound of Nigerians insulting you people? Can you already hear them in your ear? How they are going to complain? Oh, I know with the match, you know. Or do you still believe that we have one minute left? No, no, no. We're still going to score this goal. Yeah, the the thing in the thing is, I think in football sometimes, uh, with all due respect, I do ask myself like. Nigerian fans, I don't know if they actually know that we do talk to ourselves as well. I don't. <laughs> it's just me asking this question. Because, uh, to be honest, we know how important the country, football is to the country. Mm. We know, we've been in this situation as well, before as we actually yeah. to the to the, to the state that we are. We know how passionate Nigeria is. Uh, for me, for example, I've seen a situation where my brother will call me like, even then was in the youth. Don't play nonsense. So because if you play nonsense, I can't walk outside the street. So you know how important it is for, for him as well. So I think the same goes to, to every fans. But the truth about football is every country is is already involving. Every country know how powerful football is. So no country is like like a pushover anymore. Yeah, we have the big stars, we have everything, but the truth is football is football. And that's why I want people in Nigeria to understand. But every moment in time, I don't think anyone is wearing that color. I want to let Nigeria down. They know born you wear. <laughs> because you yourself, you can't even walk. How do we how do we how will you walk? If we lose that game, how are we going to, to enjoy the holiday? Mm. You can't enjoy the holiday because at the end of the day, you'll be in Nigeria. Even if your friend is your friend that will just be laughing, and they will just be laughing with you. Those ones are just laughing with you because they are your friends. But maybe deep inside them, they will be like, fuck you, Taiwo, what did you do? <laughs> so the moment, for me, the moment that goes enter, we just know that our life now is to correct this thing. Mm. Me personally, and the same goes to every individual on that field of play. You can see Osime the way he was uh, motivating the team, even when, when he's not playing. Now imagine those guys that are on the field of play. What, what will be going through their head? Because we know how important it is for the country. Yeah. We know how important it is for our career. So no one is ready to even joke with that, with that game. But the truth is, in football, Every country can score goals. Every country can defend goals. But the most important thing is, at the end of the day, we just try to, like, won the game, which we did at the end. But I don't think no one is... I know even we, we should have... We, we maybe we would have wanted to win more than 3-2 or something, which, which everyone is right about. But the truth is, football is football. There's some things that you can't correct in football. You can just be at your best for your country, but I don't think anyone is wearing their their country jersey and is joking with it. I don't think so. No, oh, amazing, amazing. I like the answer, and I mean, I I understand. I've spoken to many footballers. I know how much you guys have that passion. I know the importance of these games, but you know, as fans, be now, especially Nigeria fans, they don't send anybody or more if you don't win that game and <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not finish it. 
But yeah, um, okay. Thank you. So we've we've done a whole roundup, you know, talking from your loan days all the way to the most recent happening. Um, so before I let you go, I just want to ask you some other questions that people have thrown in. You know, people wanted to know about you know things things like that. So I'm just looking through to find some interesting questions that people have have asked you. Um, okay. Somebody said Taiwo Awoni, let me call his name, Oluwa Femi um, Agbebe says, or Agbebe, I hope I'm not spoiling his name, says Taiwo Awoni, please, I want you to be among the three highest goal scorers in the Premier League next season. Is that <laughs> something that you're, you're working towards? <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, thank you, Oluwa Femi. Uh, I really appreciate uh, For me, I see it as a big motivation for you to think of me um, in such a a way is to tell how much uh, of belief you have in me as a player. And one thing I can assure you is, is hopefully I don't let you down. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe this is like a motivation for me as well, knowing that someone is really aiming for me to be, uh, to be at my peak and to be at my best in getting to the first three. And hopefully I'll do my best and uh, hopefully I don't let you down. Thank you so much for the belief, Oluwa Femme. Nice one. Um, okay, another comment that I have here, this one is not a question, it's from George Bulus. He says, just tell Taiwo thank you for me. I watched the testimony that he gave in church, and since then, my prayer life has not been the same again. Sure, indeed, we conquer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our mouth. So, George Amen. is just saying thank you. Amen. Thank you, George. I really appreciate it. Uh... And for me, again, that's another part of me now, now believing you don't have to, to hide your, your belief because yeah. it's a way that many people will be inspired. And I'm, I'm happy that the testimony inspired you and yeah. hopefully God will help us all. Um, okay, another one we have from Nura. Nura is saying, what is your advice to the young ones that are growing up, you know, and they are dreaming of being a professional footballer like yourself? What's your advice? Firstly, for me, I would say, like, believe in God and work hard. You have to work hard. And another word I would say to you is you need a lot of patience. Be patient in what you're doing. Believe in God, work hard, and be patient. And at the end of the day, I think the sky will be a starting point for you. Mm, amazing. Great advice. Um, okay, I want to, there are so many comments. Eddie Young Asuko is saying this one is vexing for you. He said, Tyro, why did you score against Chelsea and you did not score against Man U? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it must be a Chelsea fan, so he's like, ah, You score against my own club, you don't go score against, against Man U. Um, okay, somebody said, Um, do you have any regrets leaving Union Berlin now that they are in the Champions League? Mm. No. Mm, no. I don't have any regrets because I've always known like I will leave one day. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> um, let me see if there's any other one. This one, another, this is another person, second person that is saying, saying this. This one is even taking it a step higher. Isa Ibrahim Suleiman. He says, I wish for him to be the Golden Boots winner in the next season and i hope his teammates can all assist him to do that <laughs> uh, thank you so much again i think uh for me the truth is i just like to keep my dream to myself but of mm. course it's part of my dream as well and hearing this for, from people as well is to show how much they believe in me as a player again like i said earlier and hopefully mm. i don't let it down. thank you so much okay and um what are your this now is a question from me just to round things off um looking forward to next season you know preseason is going to start in maybe i don't know two weeks one week i don't know what your schedule is like but you know any is there anything that you can tell us that you that you hope to achieve you know in the coming season is there anything that you can share with us i think for me uh the only thing i do tell people is I just want to be the better version of myself more than what mm. I was before. And uh, I think if 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 you're a football fan and you, you're into football very well, if you really, really follow my journey, 
you will know that if you watch football, like you know what is football. I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about people that really knows what is football. Uh, you've seen like the way I am last year is not the way I am this year. The way I am last two years is not the way I am last year. And that is me for you. And that's the only thing I keep on telling myself. Just be the best, the best version of yourself each year. And that is what I tell myself. Even when I'm not playing then in those years, I still believe I'm much better than what, who I was in the in the previous years. And that's the same thing I want to say to, I want to do to myself every year. And that's the same thing I want to tell my fans to to keep on looking at and to keep on looking forward to by God's grace. No, by, by God's grace, you know, and I mean, if you are a better um, version next, this season than the past season, then of course, we're going to all be excited as, as Nigerian fans because I love to see... I really personally, at least, and I know a lot of other Nigerians, we love to see our Nigerian players doing well, you know, in these big leagues around the world. It, it gives us a lot of joy and pride, you know, that, to fly that Nigeria flag high is is it, it is sweet for body. Um, okay, so to I think if I'm not mistaken, I saw behind you some jerseys on your on your wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to just ask you about that, you know. Is there any player that you've been able to exchange jerseys with that in your mind? Uh, you say if you be fan, you say if you be like, ah, I'm, all, I, I'm so happy that I was able to. to... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of players, a lot. <laughs> hmm. Okay, can you give us maybe two that you were, you were happy, like you, are, you were happy that you were able to, you know, play against them and to be able to swap jerseys? Uh, Edison Cavani. Hmm. I just think Cavani. When, when I just, was when was this? When was the Cavani one? Uh, when uh, we played uh, the friendly game against uh, against the team in Spain, uh, before the after the World Cup break. Right, after, right. After the World Cup break, we played in Spain against them, and uh, for me, is uh, the second one is uh, Lewandowski. Mm, Lewa, ah, I mean Lewa, top top striker in the world. We all yeah. know Lewa. I'm assuming this one was back in Union Berlin when you played. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, is there is there any Premier League player? Because uh, you just finished playing Premier League now. This is yeah, there are a lot of Premier League players. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, yeah. Salah and Firmino as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in total, in total, how many jerseys do you have from other players? Do you think? Ooh. I mean, maybe you don't know the exact amount, but how many do you think you have? I don't know, but including including Nigerian players, including maybe the ones that yeah, Nigerian players, everybody that you've exchanged with. <laughs> Actually, a lot. <laughs> I think it's more than it's more than thirty, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and not... more to more to come, self as you continue to to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I've kept you for long. Um, I wouldn't keep you any longer um it's been very interesting talking to you of course you know um hearing about your journey hearing about your season your belief your faith you know and some of the goals you know and like you said i'm really hoping and rooting for you that you can be an even better version of yourself um in the coming season um football goes fast you know football careers <laughs> uh, it seems it can seem long sometimes but the time just goes and you know um yeah like wow what, what happened um, so I really hope, you know, all the best for yourself in your career, you know, hope to see you at a higher level, hope to see you at the AFCON next year, hope to see you at the World Cup in three years time, you know, and more and more for the, from there, you know, maybe one day self African best player, one day self Ballon d'Or, who knows, anything is, anything is possible as long as you keep working. Um, so what's your final word for all the people that are watching this video, all the people that support you, you know, what's your final message to them? I think, uh, firstly, for me, I would say uh, thanks to Ego Striker because, uh, for me personally, and this is not because I'm on, I'm on here with with you. Uh, what you've been doing for for Nigeria news for the whole football world at, at large is something amazing. I just hope you keep on being you and you keep on doing it. I think it's a brand. I'm, for me, I'm happy to be associated with. I think. Uh, is a brand that, that give a lot of opportunity. Even the way you you channel the whole news of football matches every week, 
is something amazing and i just uh wish the the brand all the all the very best and this is not because i'm talking to the brand this is just <laughs> because of what, what you're doing indeed that uh, everyone is seeing and how smart and intelligent you are as a person and of course to to every everyone out there i want to say thank you uh for everyone that, that believe in me as a person and i want to say thank you i just hope you keep on believing and you keep on supporting not only me but every Nigerian players out there because the the transition from being a non uh, professional player and up to the professional level i think it's not a small journey and i just hope everyone keep on supporting keep on believing and keep on hoping for the best for us and of course the way you the Nigerian fans are giving all their support to to everyone of us we we'll say kudos to to them all, and we we'll say very. I say very big thank you on behalf of me and my colleague as well. I just hope you keep on supporting, and we hopefully don't disappoint or let you guys down one day. Thank you so much. Mm. All right, thank you very much, Taiwo. It's been a pleasure um, chatting with you today. Thank you.